after being absent from the past two parshiot, Miriam re-enters the story of Yitziat Mitzrayim as she leads the women in singing Shira after Kriyat Yamsuf. Interestingly, the Torah identifies her as Miriam Hanivia Achot Aharon, Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aharon. As this is the first time her name is mentioned in Chumash, earlier she is referred to as Achoto, his sister, the sister of Moshe, one needs to wonder why the Torah identifies her specifically as Achot Aharon. As the Gemara in Sota asks, Achot Aharon v'lo Achot Moshe? Is she the sister of Aharon and not the sister of Moshe? According to Rashbam, and this idea is mentioned by the Ramban as well, the Torah regularly identifies siblings by their oldest brother. The Ramban adds that here, the mention of Aharon is to honor him, as his name is not mentioned at all in the context of the Shira. Rashi, however, provides a very different explanation, citing the Gemara and Sota. The idea he presents also explains why she is identified as in via. The Gemara quotes Rav that Miriam received prophecy when she was Achot Aharon, only Achot Aharon, as Moshe was not yet born. The content of that nivuah is that my mother will give birth to the Ben Shemoshia at Israel, the son who would be the savior of the Jewish people. And so she is Miriam Hanivia. And when was she Miriam Hanivia? When she was Achot Aharon. I find this approach particularly poignant and powerful given the continuation of the Gemara. The Gemara relates how when Moshe was born, the home was filled with light. And Amram, Miriam's father, kisses her on the head as she had encouraged the parents to have another child. However, once Moshe was cast to the reeds on the side of the Yor, her father or her mother, depending on the text, gives her a patch on the head and says, Biti, my daughter, Hechan Nivuatech, where is your prophecy? They despair. And the Gemara continues, She stands from afar to see what will happen to him. She is waiting to see not only what will happen to Moshe, but also what will happen to the prophecy. Would he indeed be the savior of the Jewish people? Miriam has been living with this prophecy for 80 years, waiting, wondering what will, what will happen. She's perplexed with a question, where is this prophecy? When will it take place? She watches as many among her nation are tortured and murdered with the situation deteriorating before it finally begins to improve. Throughout all these years, she holds on to that prophecy. Finally, in our parsha, after B'nai Yisrael leave Mitzrayim and their pursuers perish in the sea, Miriam looks at the scene. She beholds everything in front of her. She sees her brother leading B'nai Israel in song, and Miriam Hanavia, from 80 years back, finally witnesses the fulfillment of the divine prophecy from decades earlier. Moshe is the Moshiach Shel Yisrael. He is the one leading them on the path towards full Geula. But let's not forget that Miriam was also the one who, back in Parshat Shemot, upon seeing Bat Paro discover her brother in the reeds, runs over to suggest a brilliant plan to ensure that Moshe grows up with a connection and an identification with, with his family and his nation. Shall I go and call for you a nurse from among the Hebrews? Her faith led her to courageously confront Bat Paro. Furthermore, Rav, earlier in Sota, and this is cited by Rashi as well, identifies the midwife Pua as none other than Miriam. She would coo to the babies to calm them, risking her life to raise the next generation of Am Yisrael. Her faith led her to actively and optimistically work and even endanger herself to save Moshe and to build up the Jewish people, all because she knew there would be a bright future. She held on to that nevuah. Chazal teach us that Miriam was not alone. In the merit of righteous women, our forefathers were redeemed from Egypt. They encouraged their husbands and they continued raising Jewish children. And they even left Mitzrayim with musical instruments, confident that there would be a moment to dance and to celebrate. 
Prophecies of redemption take an excruciatingly long time to be realized, as we all know, and we're so painfully reminded over Shabbos. Hechan nevuatenu, where is our prophecy? Where are our prophecies? We may sometimes ask ourselves. Miriam serves as a role model for us to faithfully hold dear promises of the complete Ula and to act optimistically within the current reality, as challenging as it may be. May we too merit to lead and join Am Yisrael in song as we witness Hashem's salvation and the complete Geula in our day. Thank you.